Ernst Bachmann was born on the 25th of August 1919, the son of a farmer in the village of Kistorf in Schleswig Holstein in northern Germany. Following basic schooling in 1935, he started working on his father's farm. On the 1st of April 1939, during the invasion of Poland, he volunteered for the SS Verfügungstrupp, the precursor of the Waffen SS. He received his basic training in Hamburg Langenhorn and was assigned to the 3rd Battalion of SS Standarte Germania. During the campaign in Poland he was wounded while serving as machine gunner in the 9th Company of the regiment. Bachmann was wounded again in the Soviet Union during the fighting for the River Dnieper on the 23rd of July, 1941. After convalescing Bachmann was assigned as an instructor for volunteers in Holland. In the spring of 1942 he volunteered to become tanker and was assigned to the tank battalion of the Division Das Reich. The division was trained at the training area at Wildeflecken. He went to the Soviet Union for the second time with the division and saw heavy fighting for Kharkov and during the Battle of Kursk. The division returned to France for training on the new Panther tanks and also for its reconstitution after being severely depleted in the fighting on the Eastern Front. When the Allies invaded Normandy on the 6th of June, 1944, the division was in southern France in order to counter potential Allied landings there. The division Das Reich was soon redeployed against the mighty Allied force. Here in the hedgerows of the Norman countryside Bachmann will rise as one of the greatest panzer aces of World War II. On the 7th of July the Americans had crossed the Viertot Canal, the 30th Infantry and 9th Infantry Divisions advancing as far as Le Desert. The U.S. 3rd Armored Division exploited this success and advanced across the fields towards the northwest of St. Lo. Das Reich's Commander SS Brigade Fuhrer Lammerding was ordered to counter this breakthrough and race towards the Americans. The 4th Company SS Panzer Regiment II was in the lead with Barkman. As a platoon leader here he was to engage a Sherman tank for the first time. North of San Sebastian Santini on the 8th of July, Barkman knocked out his first Sherman tank. The hedgerows of Normandy were a distant world from the vast expense of the Soviet Union where he had most of his experience as a commander. Near Perriers on the 9th of July he took part on a second counterattack. The Allied thrust began to falter and until the 12th of July both sides tried unsuccessfully to break the stalemate. That same day Barkman destroyed two more Shermans and a third was immobilized. At dawn on the morning of the 13th of July as Barkman was in an ambush position adding camouflage to his panther tank he noticed some movement in the hedgerow in front. Suddenly the unmistakable silhouette of a Sherman tank and its main turret and gun began to clear the hedgerow. Barkman warned his crew and shouted to his gunner Pogendorf 11 o'clock turret load AP 400 meters. The driver Heidern counted six tanks in total and Barkman shouted fire. The shell flew towards the first Sherman penetrating the front hull and the tank came to a full stop. Then smoke began to exit through the commander's hatch the other Shermans now aware of the Panthers stopped and one of them started to fire his main gun in the direction of Barkman. The second round left the long barrel of the panther and screamed towards the enemy taking one of the tank's tracks. Five meters next to the panther another main gun round slammed into the hedgerow. The immobilized Sherman received a new hit that this time blew its turret up into the air. The four remaining Shermans also started to fire, even with all of their machine guns. The automatic fire rattled against the front slope of the German tank. Meanwhile Bachmann's gunner had hit and eliminated a third Sherman which had exposed its flank while attempting to turn. The remaining three tanks quickly backed up into the protective concealment off Thunderbrush in a swell in the ground. Another ten minutes passed with no activity to the front, when suddenly a grenadier came running up shouting at Bachmann the Yanks have broken through behind you. Be careful they have anti-tank guns with them. The Panthers started to move out it reached a patch of woods and moved through it. A short while later Bachmann spotted the lead American elements. Barkman shouted high explosive 400 meters. Fire! The crown of a pine tree came crashing down when the round exploded in the midst of its branches. The second round slammed into the middle off a group of wildly moving men forcing them to the ground. The tank's home machine guns started firing cutting a wide berth through the vegetation. The enemy started to pull back in a panic and Barkman's tank followed them. Suddenly there was a flash in front of the tank. An anti-tank gun round hissed past the turret. Barkman shouted engage the anti-tank gun. The first round from the tank went too high. The gunner corrected his sight picture and eliminated the anti-tank gun threat. With the second round there was a crash off to the right. 
another anti-tank gun had joined in. The round hit the front of the turret below the gunner's optics, and flames shot out from the vehicle. The radio operator driver and loader were able to bail out but the gunner remained unconscious in the tank. Barkman waited in vain for him to emerge when he realized something was wrong he raced back and pulled the unconscious man through the hatch when the tank did not receive any more fire. Barkman ordered his crew to put out the fire on the tank. They succeeded in putting out the flames and getting the vehicle running again bringing it back to the maintenance facility. The next day while waiting for his vehicle to finish being repaired received orders to take his platoon and hack free four tanks that were surrounded. The company commander's orders were brief. He said get the four tanks back. I'm giving you one of the reserve tanks as yours is not yet ready. When Barkman boarded the other tank which had just been repaired, he noticed the blood on the turret walls from his predecessor in the tank. The previous tank commander had suffered a common fate around to the head from being exposed outside of the protective armor of the vehicle. Barkman and the two other crews were able to make their way through to the encircled tanks without incident the damaged tanks pulled back. Barkman received orders to take their place shortly thereafter the Americans attacked again in an effort to force a breakthrough to the south. Barkman's panther knocked out three more Shermans. Towards noon the tank's regiment commander S.S. Obersturmbannfuhrer Christian Tykeson appeared at Barkman's location. The tall slim man was a highly decorated soldier who had earned the respect of his men in addition to both the Knight's Cross and Oak Leaves. Tykeson was a veteran who would later fall in the Normandy fighting ambushed by an American patrol. Tykeson gave the orders to Barkman were going to move forward towards the house ahead. The enemy is holding wounded from the division, and we will get them back. The three Panthers moved out they reached the house and freed the wounded Germans from the American forces which pulled back at the sight of the advancing tanks. During the fighting the next day Barkman's tank was hit by artillery which damaged his running gear. It was only with great difficulty that the vehicle could be brought back to repair. When the crew reached the maintenance facility Panther 424 had finally been repaired Barkman and the men switched vehicles. The tank regiment was moved to the area around St. Anbeen on the 25th of July. The front in that sector lacked cohesiveness, and the tanks of the regiment helped plug the gaps supported by a handful of grenadiers. When the U.S. 7th Corps then showed signs of breaking through, in the area around Marigny in the direction of Avranches, the tank regiment was moved again in order to close a gap that had come about in the sector of the Panzerlehr Division. After two days of carpet bombing by the Allies the Panzerlehr Division had lost combat effectiveness. Despite the enemy's aerial activities the move in general was made without incident. After leaving its former positions however 424 fell out due to carburetor problems. The maintenance team attempted to repair the vehicle on the spot in order to finish more quickly but certain safety precautions were ignored. This event will prove to have dire consequences. When a group of four Typhoon fighter bombers attacked. The first rounds hammered into the open engine compartment. The coolant line and the oil cooler were shot up and the engine caught fire but the fire was extinguished. The maintenance personnel then had to work the entire night. The enemy had advanced to the rear of the tank by then but the hard work paid off. At first light 424 was fully mobile again and started to make its way to the new positions of the company. SS Hauptscharfer Heinz and the company maintenance sergeant Schirmeister Korth mounted the tank to get to the new area of operations more quickly. They reached the area around La Lori not far from the main road from Kutans to St. Lo. At the outskirts of the village along the curvy road, the tank ran into infantry and trains personnel. Schirmeister Korth exclaimed, What's going on? Yank tanks advancing right on Kutans. Barkman replied, The Yanks can't be there yet. Our tanks are there. Let's be careful anyway, Korth. You and I will screen to the front. Heinz chimed in and the two men dismounted and moved about 150 meters in front of the tank. In the distance Barkman could make out the sound of fighting and aircraft. The two men disappeared around a corner a short while later. Barkman heard submachine gun and small arms. He saw the maintenance sergeant was wounded in his arm and shoulder. Barkman shouted what's going on. Heinz replied we made it to the main road where there were Yanks. They called out for us to surrender waving Red Cross flags but when we started to run back they fired at us. Heinz continued there were American tanks rolling along the road to Kutans. Behind them is a long column of vehicles. Barkman yelled stay with the Hauptscharfer we're going to the crossroads. Barkman ordered his crew to prepare for combat. The loader reported the machine gun and main gun ready. The panther moved out slowly, 
Fortunately there was a wall on both sides of the street which was covered with vegetation and offered concealment. The tank reached the crossroads and positioned itself next to a tall oak. Barkman told his crew, Tanks approaching from the left, 200 meters to the main road. We'll take out the first two tanks. Pogendorf took up the first Sherman in his sights. The turret was knocked off of its race with the first round. The gunner started traversing in the direction of his next target. The second round left the barrel and scored another direct hit with the second Sherman going up in flames. It blocked the crossroads for the tanks that were following. They turned and then the vehicles that had already passed the crossroads started turning as well. Barkman told his gunner to fire at will and round after round was soon barking out of the main gun. The coaxial machine gun fired several long bursts. Fuel and ammunition blew apart personnel carriers, jeeps and trucks were blown to bits. In the minutes that followed the crossroads took on the appearance of a blazing military junkyard. Barkman suddenly saw two Shermans approaching from the left. They had left the main road and attempted to approach Barkman cross country. Barkman issued his fire command. Anti-tank. Eleven o'clock. Fire. The tank versus tank engagement started. The first enemy tank was ablaze but the second Sherman was able to hit the panther twice before it also started to burn. Then it was hit in the engine compartment with a well-placed round. The smell of gunpowder mixed with the thick oily smoke spread over the crossroads roads. Covered by the haze other enemy vehicles made the way back from the direction of Kutans. Whenever the haze cleared a little Barkman re-engaged and created even more gaps in the long procession of enemy vehicles. The fighting had lasted an hour before the Americans were able to bring up more tanks in an effort to knock out the solitary German holding up the advance to Kutans. Before they could make their appearance, however fighter bombers came howling in above the panther. Their bombs fell creating large craters. One of the bombs detonated about five meters from the tank jerking it violently to the side. The bomb that followed toppled the oak tree next to the panther. The shrapnel from the bombs pelted the walls of the vehicle the tank heaved and shuddered. 